Alabama police are coming under fire after an Indian citizen who was out for a walk in northern Alabama was confronted by police. He was slammed to the ground, which led him to being temporarily paralyzed, a condition he's fighting through right now. That according to the man's lawyer. That lawyer, Hank Sherrod, spoke with me earlier about his client's case, and I began by asking him what the victim, Suresh Bhai Patel, was doing in Alabama. Mr. Patel is a grandfather, and he had a premature grandchild that was a big demand on his son and uh, daughter-in-law. Son wanted to go back and uh, had to drop out of his master's program in electrical engineering at University of Alabama in Huntsville, and his um, it was just uh, needed a break, and he took uh, came came here to help. Came here to be a granddad. The situation, this incident happened just outside of Huntsville, Alabama, if I'm correct. And a statement by the police there says the caller who lives in the neighborhood did not recognize Mr. Patel, thought he was suspicious. What was suspicious about his behavior? You know, first off, I haven't seen any information about this call. Um, Taking the police at their word, the only thing that would have been suspicious is that, uh, you know, he was of brown skin. Uh, and you know, this was in the morning. I mean, this was uh, you know not at night. He's uh, dressed nicely in a, a sweater um, and a pair of pants and a, and a knit cap. And so when police arrive on the scene, there he was apparently walking on the sidewalk uh, down the street. And as police approached him, apparently uh, Suresh Bai did not speak or does not speak English, and he put his hands into his pockets. Is that what police are claiming? He never put his hands in his pockets. They checked his pockets uh, to see if he was um, patted him uh, to see if he had a weapon, I guess. Um, he had his hands out and he pointed um, down the, the street and said, no English, Indian, walking, and pointed to, said, house number, and he gave the number of the, of the house. And he was, uh, he was grabbed when he pointed? Is that what the claim is? Uh, you know, I believe, and again, uh, you know, I've, I've just gotten translation of, through the sun, but my understanding is, is that at that point, you know, he, that's what he answered them. He stopped. He was stopped and talking to them, trying to uh, explain. And one of the officers, pretty much out of the blue, just grabbed his arm, put it behind him and took him uh, directly to the ground. Um, and he immediately became paralyzed in all four of his extremities. Now that, and his legs. That's the most incredible part of the story. Being knocked to the ground by these officers apparently left Mr. Patel bleeding from the face and, uh, as we've read, paralyzed and in need of surgery to fuse two vertebrae. As I understand it, and I haven't had a chance to talk to the doctors or see medical records, but um, the, the doctors say that there was uh, trauma to the, to the cervical spine that caused immediate swelling. And they needed to do the cervical fusion uh, in order to get in there and relieve the pressure on the uh, the spine. And, and and so far, Mr. Uh, Patel, he's gotten he's able. He when I saw him yesterday, he was able to raise his arms like this, but he can't uh, grip uh, with either of his hands right now. And I think it's a little worse on the left. Um, he's gotten some uh, use of his right leg, um, but very little of the left. The use of force here is not entirely unusual from what we've seen in police departments around the country. However, what makes it different, I think, certainly, uh, at least in the appearance part of this, is the outcome of Mr. Patel being paralyzed um, as a result of being tackled the way that he was. Madison police have refused to identify the officers involved in the stop. Is that unusual for a case like this? I don't think it's necessarily unusual, but I don't think it's right. Um, you know. This is a, you know, if you don't identify the officer, um, you only release the video and the audio, which they admit they have, but you only release that when it um, uh, supports you. You don't do it uh, in this case when it obviously you're concerned that it doesn't.